Good morning, everybody. My name is Chris Jennon. I am a leader here at the Journey Church in Madison. Merry Christmas, first of all. My wife Kay and I and our son Gideon enjoyed a lovely ham dinner. I hope that you guys had a great Christmas as well. As we begin together, I want to encourage you, if you are new here, to go to journeymadison.com slash watch live and fill out the connect card. This is going to help us get to know you better, figure out how that we can pray for you and serve you better. As we watch this morning, I want you to find a comfortable space to watch and listen. Grab a Bible, grab a journal so that you can follow along and that we can discover God's goodness together. As, while you're at it, while we we're online, why don't you just comment and say where you're watching from. We would like to get to know you guys better and figure out how we can serve you. I'm going to pray for our time together. Lord God, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, we believe that you have something special for us this morning. So Lord, please speak to our hearts. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see the things that you have in store for us. You are a good God. We worship you with all of our hearts, all of our minds. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, let's sing together. Hey, Journey fam. It's Eugene and Pastor Stephen today on December 27th. Uh, welcome to our last Sunday of 2020. We've made it through the year, just about. Um, and we're just excited to uh, end the year with some worship to the Lord. Uh, so wherever you're at, I just invite you to um, just quiet your hearts and just set your mind on the Lord today. Set your heart on the Lord today as we finish the year and bring in the new year. So uh, we're going to start with, Lord, I need you. Mm. Let's do it. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My one defense. My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. When sin runs deep, your grace is more. Grace is found, is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Oh, Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. So teach my soul to rise to you when temptation comes my way. And when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Hey, Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you.
seated above. Seated above, enthroned in the Father's love. Destined to die, pour out for all mankind. God's only, God's only Son, perfect and spotless one. He never sinned, but suffered as if he did. All authority. All authority. Every victory is yours. All authority. Every victory. of honor and glory, worthy of all of our praise, you overcame, Jesus, Jesus, awesome and power forever, awesome and great is your name. Power in hand. Power in hand. Speaking of Father plan. Sending us out. Sending us out. Light in the broken land. All authority, God. All authority. Every victory is yours. All authority. Every victory is yours, Savior. Savior, worthy of honor and Awesome and power forever. Awesome and great is your name. You overcame. Thank you, Jesus. Sing, we will overcome. We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of our testimony. Every one overcome. We will overcome. We will overcome. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome. We will overcome. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome one last time we will overcome we will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony everyone overcome Savior worthy of honor and Worthy of all of our praise, you overcame, Jesus, Jesus.
Jesus, awesome and power forever, awesome and great is your name, you overcame. Finish with Savior. Savior, worthy of honor and glory. Worthy of all of our praise, you overcame, Jesus, Jesus, awesome and power forever, awesome and great is your name, you overcame. Next song is going to be Build My Life. A sing worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one. Who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe? We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me. Who you are and fill me with your love and lead me to your love and those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, oh, we live for you. Jesus, the name. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you, oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around. I will build. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken and I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be one more time and I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I 
will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. Worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Alright guys, we're going to end with Make Room. I just ask that you, when you think about the words of this song, really think about making room in your life for Jesus in this next, many things that he wants to do through, through and in our lives, but we have to make room for him. He's not going to force us uh, to allow him into our lives so that he can move. We have to make room for him. So let's dwell on that as we sing these words. Here is where I lay it down, every burden, every crown. This is my surrender, this is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down, every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender, this is my, and I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Here is where I lay it down, you are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. You are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. This is my and I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. And I will make room for you oh, To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to I'll make room And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to And I will make room Do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Sing Shake Up. Shake up the ground for all my tradition. Break down the walls, all my religion. Your name is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground for all my tradition. Break down the walls, all my religion. Your name is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground for all my tradition. Break down the walls, all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. One more time. Shake up the ground for all my tradition. Break down the walls, all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. And I will make room. For you, oh God, ever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you, God, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, yeah. 
make room for you this year, Jesus. We want you in our lives. We want you to Thank move, you, God. Lord. Yes, Lord. We want you to show up in mighty ways, Lord, as we close out this year. As we look to the future, Lord, we yes, welcome Lord. you in our future. Yes, Lord. Help us to know what you want for us, Jesus. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Well, Journey family, I just love singing with you. And I know uh, there will come a time when all of us are going to be back together and we'll be able to sing all together in person. Uh, but I know there's no limit to what God can do either in person or digitally. Uh, so we're so glad that you joined us and singing uh, with us today. We're going to take the opportunity now to give. And I want to thank you for your generous giving. And I want to encourage you as we, uh, as we give to, to believe that God is with us and to give time, treasure, and talent. As we give right now, you can go to journeymadison.com. Uh, forward slash give, and you can give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. I want to encourage you uh, to tithe. I want to encourage you to, to take a step of faith and, and look at what you've been giving and then uh, move forward and give more than you were giving uh, last week or even uh, this past year. And I want to thank you for your generosity. We saw God move in incredible ways this past year, and that's because of your generosity. So thank you for giving. Thank you for continuing to support uh, all the things we do digitally to minister within our community and, uh, and to minister in the community through Laundry Love and other ministries. Uh, church, I love you and I'm so grateful for your generosity. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for the generosity of your people. Uh, God, I pray that those who uh, or without a job would get a job. I pray that those who are looking for relief would get relief, that the, those who are on furlough would go off furlough, that you would provide as only you can provide. And God, that, that we would see an increase of generosity so that we could be generous to our community. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and caring for us. And Lord, we put our trust and hope in you. In your name, amen. God bless you as you give. Hey everybody, I'm Jill Bailey and welcome to The Journey. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We're going to get started with our sermon in just a few minutes. So please get your Bible and journal ready. If you're new here with us at The Journey this morning, we want you to feel welcome. So no matter your background or current situation, just know that this is a safe and welcoming place and we're so glad to have you here with us today. We also want you to know that there's a place at The Journey that's just perfect for you. Church is so much more than just a Sunday service. It would be helpful to us if you would be sure to make your way over to our website at journeymadison.com on our Watch Live page and fill out our visitor form today. When you hit submit, it goes to one of our pastors and you'll receive a nice welcome email from Pastor Stephen and a gift from us in the mail. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We're so glad that you are and we're excited to connect with you in our ever-pivoting, new, crazy new normal. We have several ways to do it. 
We have a Journey Church Madison Facebook page to click like and comment on. We have a YouTube channel and our website through Vimeo Streaming to watch our inspirational daily content and a neat little app you can download for free to keep it all organized. Just look for Journey Church Madison in your app store to download the home of all the cool widgets that help keep us connected through daily encouragements and lessons from our Journey family and pastors, all as we're safely tucked into our virtual world. And as we move forward into 2021, we go into our new year, and I'm delighted to announce that we will begin holding live, distanced, masked services right here at Gateway Church, starting with Sunday, January 3rd. So please be sure to register your family to save a spot at either the 9 o'clock or the 1030 service. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We believe you're here for a reason. God has something he wants to say specifically to you wherever you are. And our hope is that today you're encouraged and feel closer to him than ever before. Please let us know if there's any way that we can help you and connect with us at journeymedicine.com and on social media to stay up to date with everything happening here at The Journey. We also hope to see each of you in our lobby time after the service on Zoom. So watch for the link in the chat on your streaming platform and we'll see you there. We hope you have a great weekend. Happy New Year. Well, Merry Christmas, Journey family. It's Sunday, December 27th, and uh, man, I am so excited to be wrapping up this year with all of you, and it's going to be a great Sunday together. Now, I trust that all of you had a great Christmas. I know I did, spending time with my family and friends and just getting the opportunity to rest and reflect on the year. And so uh, today, the message that I have for us is a simple message about coming to Jesus. Because I think right now, as we finish up our year, as we look to the next, I think we need to come to Jesus. We need to spend time with him and be in his presence. So open up your Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. The Gospel of John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. And this message today is called, Come and Drink. Come and Drink. Jesus, we pray that you would meet us here today. You would meet us as we look at your word, as we dive in. And God, we thank you for all of the presence. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you for family and friends and Zoom calls and all the things that we have done this past year. And God, we want to feast and drink, and we want to enjoy your presence now. We want to take in all that you have for us in your word today. So, Lord, uh, meet us here as we dive in. In your name, Jesus, amen. Well, John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39 uh, says this, On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the spirit had not been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Well, one of the things that I like to do at the end of the year, at the end of the year and the beginning of a new year, uh, is I like to remember that how we end the year is how we start the next year. Let me just let that sink in. How we end this year is how we start this next year. And that's why we're ending it with Jesus, because we want to start it with Jesus. And there's some questions that, you know, as we dive in today, I just want to pose some questions for us as we think about Jesus, as we think about ministry. And these are questions I ask myself and our staff and leaders every year. Question number one, what is God speaking to me this year? What is God speaking to me? What is God saying prophetically about what I'm a part of? Meaning the Journey Church in Madison and Dane County? Have I left anything undone, not repented for, unforgiven, unconfessed, unresolved between me, God, and others? Number four, is my family in order? Do they they love what I do? 
Now for me, do they love that their dad's in ministry, that their mom's in ministry? That What do you do and does your family love that you do it? Have I honest, is my spiritual, personal, family, financial, professional life functioning in a rhythm that promotes health or burnout? When will I rest this next year? Have I honestly answered the above questions? Or did I just say what I wished were true? Whew, man, good questions. And then finally, am I still white hot with passion over the assignment God has given me? Am I still white hot with passion over the assignment God has given me? I want to encourage you, just begin asking some questions as we finish the year. Because how we finish is how we start the next year. So we're finishing with Jesus here in John chapter 7. And the first point today is that Jesus is patient. And I love I love the text here. It says, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out. And what we see here is that Jesus waits for the last day of the feast, not the first day. And we see his great patience. One of the things I love doing is I love reading leadership articles and I'm in the news all the time. Now, I do my best to not be on the negative side of the news, but just learning new things and gathering data because I want to learn all the time. And one of the things that they showed uh, is a social science experiment. And uh, they said that if you're going to meet with somebody and you have good news and bad news, always deliver the bad news first. Always deliver the bad news first because people are going to hear that bad news and then you have a whole meeting to give them how you're going to work on whatever the bad news was. Don't wait for the end to give people the bad news And Jesus obviously knew this because he's the God of the universe. And so at this party, this big gathering, he must have delivered whatever bad news needed to be delivered at the beginning because here at the end, he delivers great news to everyone. And what we see in this is that Jesus is incredibly patient, waits for the last day, here we are, the end of the year, the 27th of December. We're almost turning over the clock to 2021. And you may be thinking, I didn't really come to God a lot. I got things unresolved between me and my Savior and me and other people. And is there going to be time? Did I wait too long? Well, I want to tell you, you didn't. Because God is patient. Jesus is patient. He's patient with everyone, waiting until the last day to invite everyone in. And if you feel like it's been too long and that God's done with you, I'm here to tell you he's not done with you. That God loves you and and he's so patient. Come to Jesus. I think all of us this year have regrets. All of us have grief. And I want us in the midst of those regrets and grief and all those things to remember right here, Jesus, Jesus doesn't show up to the party, deliver some news, and then leave. He stays. He stays the whole time. Jesus is staying the whole way through 2020. And he's ready. He's ready to give you a word. He's ready to receive you today. All it would take is for you to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved. He's coming. Not just that he's coming, but he has come and he loves you. So when you're ready, Jesus is ready. Let me say that again. When you're ready, Jesus is ready. Now let's get into an even better part of this text. Point number two, Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling uh, during this whole year of all of us sheltering in place. And many of us, if you have kids, you were, and then they weren't in private school, then your kids were 
learning from home. And I know my six-year-old, he's in first grade, his name's AJ, and uh, we did homeschooling all year with him, Zoom calls for four hours a day. And, and AJ got in this pattern, this habit of hiding, hiding from me, and then jumping out and scaring me. Almost every day, he would just get real quiet, and I'd be like, AJ, AJ, I'd be calling out for him. And then, boom, he'd, surprise, Dad. Now, I'd say he surprised me maybe out of seven days out of the week, two out of the seven. But he would get me two out of those seven times, and I knew it was coming. I'd be calling out for AJ, 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 where are you? He'd be hiding under something and then jump out and scare me. And here we see in our text that Jesus is calling to us. Jesus stood up and he cries out, meaning he's, he's yelling out. He's saying to everyone, this message, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. And Jesus is calling out to us. Jesus is calling out to us. Are you listening? He's saying, come and drink. He is crying out. Are you able to hear his voice? When Jesus was on the cross and he cried out, rocks split open. When he cried out on the cross, rocks split open. And his voice is just as powerful today. Jesus is alive and he is speaking. This reminds me of the, the song, Oh, come to the altar. Are you hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus Jesus is calling. And this call, it goes out to anybody who will listen. And for many of you, you, you think, and I've spent this whole year, Pastor Stephen, I haven't come to God. I've been struggling, I've been wrestling. Jesus is calling out to you right now, and he wants to give you hope and peace and joy and love. What are your ears listening to right now? Now, obviously, if you're watching this and you're listening to the Word of God, you're listening to somebody preach to you, and Jesus is speaking to you through me, through His Word. But what's been the predominant voice you've been listening to? Has it been advertisers crying out to you to buy and to purchase? Songs crying out to you with different messages? What we listen to affects us. The words we speak affects us. Who we listen to affects us. And so this call goes out to a specific people. Now, I think it goes out to everyone, but Jesus is calling out and he is saying, is anyone dry or weary? Do you thirst? Is there a place spiritually in your life where there is lack? Jesus is saying, come to me. Let me fill you up to overflowing, to where rivers of living water flow out of you. I think as we end this year, one of the ways that we can honor the Lord is it's not by performing well. It's not by, even though God wants us to perform well, I, I, I think as we end the year, it's, God's not looking that we did our best and then he'll bless us, even though he wants us to do our best. God's not looking for us to achieve more, even though he's called us to achieve great things. No, I think the way we honor the Lord is, is we end the year is by being thirsty. Hungry, broken, tired. For when we are weak, then he is strong. And I can tell you, I've been in ministry 20 years. I've never experienced a year like 2020. 
It's the hardest year of ministry I've ever been through. Reminds me of a story I heard some pastor say or read in some book, but it's that the deer honors the stream by coming to drink. The only thing the deer can do to show a stream honor is by being thirsty. And we honor the Lord at the end of this year, not by saying, God, look what I did. Look at my achievements, God. Look at how I made it through 2020. No, the best way we can honor the Lord this year is by coming to the Lord weary, dry, hungry, and tired. So that the Lord can satisfy us the deepest longing of our souls in every way. Which reminds me of another story about Alexander the Great where he had this general whose daughter was having a birthday, I think the story goes, and, and this general goes to Alexander the Great's uh, like second in command, you know, his, his right hand, and, and the general uh, says, my daughter's having a birthday, and, and he asks for an exorbitant sum of money, a massive amount of money. And Alexander's chief of staff, right hand, whatever that is, says, well, I'll take it to Alexander. And so he takes it to Alexander. And, and he thinks, just chief of staff thinks, Alexander is just going to, he's going to smoke this general. How dare this general ask these things? And so he delivers the news and this is exorbitant sum of money. and This massive ask. And Alexander says, I want to give it to him. And the chief of staff is, is aghast. Why would you do this? And Alexander says, in, in asking for this, he pays me two great honors. One is that I have the money and an abundance to be able to provide what he has asked. And number two is that I am generous enough to give it. How much more our Heavenly Father wants to provide for us exactly what we need. And the way we the way we receive all that we need is by being needy. Not by showing God how good we are, but by showing our lack. And you're never going to get to the bottom of the storehouse of God. No, no friend is going to exhaust the storehouse of our God. No enemy can plunder his storehouses. God has an infinite abundance he wants to bestow on us who are what? Needy. Come, Jesus says. He cries out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow what? Rivers of living water. Which brings me to my final point, that Jesus is all we need. Jesus is all we need. Every need in you, hunger, it finds its end in Jesus. He makes every need more enjoyable and every want a gift. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. And, and maybe you've heard that phrase before, Jesus plus nothing equals everything. What it says is, is not that I'm going to eat Jesus because I need food, but it's that if I seek Jesus first, if I'm seeking after his kingdom first, he will provide everything that I need. Jesus, Jesus is all we need. Now in our text, Jesus says this, and he says it in a way where he says, if you believe in me, if you believe in Jesus, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. He said this about the Holy Spirit. What does this mean? It means that, that when we put our faith and our hope and our trust in Jesus, he doesn't just give us what we need, but he actually does something supernatural in us in, in filling us with the Holy Spirit to where now all, everything we need is actually inside of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And now rivers of living water flow out of us. And we, we begin to receive grace through the Holy Spirit who now indwells in us. 
For thousands of years, the people of God had to go to a temple to experience the power and the presence of God. We now, as believers in Jesus, can experience the power and the presence because the Holy Spirit resides in us. Do you need saving? Jesus saves. Do you need love? Jesus brings us the love of the Father. Do you need power? Jesus brings us the same power that raised him from the dead, dwells in us through the Holy Spirit. I challenge you to pursue Jesus at the end of the year. These last few days of the year, press into the presence of God. Do something, do crazy spiritual things you've never done this year. Fast from food, fast from uh, f- food or drink or wh- whatever it is that, that, you, that you've been satisfying yourself with. Get in the word more than you've ever gotten in the word. Spend some time praying. Spend some time in, in community, even if it's over Zoom, just talking to people about what God is doing inside of you and what God's doing inside of them. If there's ever a year to finish strong, if there's ever a year just to finish and say, I'm going to run through this tape and I'm going to keep running into 2021. If all the tragedy and the pain and the loss and the hard things in 2020 have taught me anything, it's that the only place I find comfort is in Jesus. Run to Jesus. I plead with you, come to Jesus. Lean into Jesus. I can tell you the, the pain and the challenges that I've experienced, that my family has experienced. The only thing that has comforted us is Jesus. There's another story from my, my six-year-old. We were at the breakfast table and it's just a random moment with AJ. We're eating breakfast and He looks at me and he says, if you could have anything, if you could have anything, what would it be? Now, as a pastor, you'd think, yeah, he's going to say some spiritual answer. And I, I legitimately thought in that moment, like, do I really, like, what is deep down in my heart? What am I longing for? And I honestly looked at my six year old and I just said, I want Jesus here. With me. And I got emotional because deep down what my heart is longing for is time with my Savior. To know that He's close, to know that He's with me and He'll never leave me or forsake me. It was a really touching moment early in the morning having breakfast and then and then AJ said, okay, Dad, but I mean, like, once you already have Jesus, like, what, what else would you have? And I said, I would have an entire pallet of $100 bills. And he was like, what? How much money is that? I said, I looked it up on, on uh, the internet, and I think it's like $100 million is a pallet of $100 bills. So when- and then we talked about money and what we buy with money, and, uh, but it was, uh, it devolved from there. But where it started was, the honest answer from my heart was that I wanted. I challenge you, where, where's your heart? I don't think my heart is always there. It happened to be there that point. Leaning into Jesus, pursuing Jesus. Jesus lived the perfect life we couldn't live, died on a cross in our place for our sins, rose again on the third day, defeating our greatest enemies of Satan, sin, and death. And now, if you put your faith in Him and you trust in Him, He will take your sin give you his righteousness and make you new from the inside out. Christian, we need that newness, that refreshment every day. If you're watching this and you are not a Christian, you do not know Jesus, he wants to do that right now in an instant to save you, to see you transformed by his power. Jesus is patient. Jesus is calling Jesus is all you need. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you are all we need. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that you care for us. I pray right now for those those watching this that need to come to you. 
and be saved, that God, they would be saved, they would confess with their mouth that you are Lord and believe in your heart. Believe in the heart that God raised you from the dead. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, I think as we finish up this year, let's receive communion together. I'm going to go get my communion cup. And with whatever you are taking communion with this morning, milk, cookies, crackers, orange juice, lots of different ways you can do it. I have this little cup here and wafer. And if you're new to communion, what communion is, it's a, something Jesus commanded that we do in remembrance of him. And what we do is we take bread or a wafer and juice, and the bread signifies the body of Jesus broken for us, and the juice is the blood of Jesus shed for us, which forgives us from all of our sins. So we take the cracker this morning, or today, whenever you're watching this, Jesus took all the punishment that we deserved upon himself. We take the cracker remembering that we don't face the wrath of God being in Jesus. We face only the love and the grace of God. Let's take the cracker today. And then the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I encourage you to, as you take the cup this morning, to once again confess and repent. And experience anew the grace of God in your life. Let's take the cup. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for being with us all year, even in the times we didn't see you. We didn't experience your grace, but we knew we now look back and we see you were there. Which means as we look forward, we know that you're there and you're with us. In your name, amen. Church, we have an exciting opportunity as we move into 2021. Not to accomplish great things, but to see our God accomplish great things. We're going to be going through the book of Exodus. It's a whole series called Into the Wilderness, and I invite you to join us in person here at Gateway Church, 9 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. to join us online. I encourage you, as you finish the year, I encourage you to give, to be generous. This whole ministry is supported by your generosity. We want to move into 2021 with our budget doing really well, with an opportunity to be able to love and serve our community and to be able to keep offering great teaching and the message of Jesus in all the digital ways that, that we can. Love you, church. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your faithfulness as we've been through this year together. So let's end the year with Jesus and let's begin the year with Jesus. I will see many of you in person on January 3rd here at Gateway Church. And I know I'll experience all of us, either online or in person, on that day as well. Love you, church. You are greater in the eyes of the Lord than you are in your own.